While other space companies settle for safely landing their spaceships in a body of water and pulling them into shore, a few go a step further by attaching legs to the base of the crafts to assist it in landing on the ground, or a landing pad. But SpaceX chose to take it a step further with Mechazilla. The large tower will be outfitted with mechanical arms that will be used to catch and hold the ship when it returns to Earth. Elon Musk recently published the first official visualization of what SpaceX's plan to catch super heavy boosters might look like in real life. However, the simulation he shared raises as many questions as it answers. Want to find out more? Stay tuned as we cover all about Mechazilla in this video. Since at least late 2020, Elon Musk has been floating the idea of catching starships and super heavy boosters out of the sky as an alternative to having the several dozen ton steel rockets use basic legs to land on the ground. This would be a major departure from SpaceX's highly successful Falcon family of spaceships, which land on a relatively complex set of deployable legs that can be retracted after most landings. These flexible, lightweight structures have mostly been reliable and easily reusable, but Falcon boosters still occasionally have rough landings, which can use up disposable shock absorbers and even damage the legs, making the boosters hard to safely recover and slower to reuse. But the Falcon boosters are extremely lightweight vessels compared to the Starship Super Heavy. Once plans to stretch the Starship upper stages tanks and three more Raptors are realized, the Starship may be capable of launching more than 200 tons, 440,000 pounds, of payload to low Earth orbit, LEO. With ship and booster recovery, due to this, Elon Musk plans to catch super heavy boosters, and maybe starships too, to save landing leg mass and enable immediate reflight of an otherwise unwieldy giant rocket. After the successful completion of the construction of the Mechazilla Tower, which stands about 122 meters, 400 feet tall, the space company began testing to ensure its reliability. The testing process began last month. According to the Tesla Rati site, on January 4th, SpaceX lifted, opened, and swung the tower's building-sized arms for the first time. Four days later, SpaceX performed a variation on the first round of tests, slowly lifting the assembly up the side of the launch tower and opening and closing the arms. The second test also examined the swinging motion of the arms, demonstrating more complex longitudinal movements that required synchronized motion of both arms. On January 9th, SpaceX performed the most ambitious testing yet, nearly lifting the arms to the top of their approximately 14 meter, 460 feet tall, launch tower backbone to simulate the range of vertical motion required to lift and stack Starship and Super Heavy. Thankfully, the arms performed well and returned to their resting positions without much issue. Then, on January 11th, SpaceX proceeded to install six water bags, three to a side, on the Starship simulator frame, like giant heavy duty water balloons, those bags are routinely used to stress test large structures and devices by simulating payloads that might be too expensive or inconvenient to use solely for testing purposes. With those bags attached but still empty, SpaceX proceeded to send the catch arms up and down the full length of the launch tower at record speeds. On January 12th, SpaceX filled all six balls with water, resulting in a total weight of 120 to 300 tons perfect for simulating the dry mass of the Starship and Super Heavy, totaling about 230 to 320 tons. The whole arm structure visibly sagged during the filling process, as the weight of the ballast stretched the several inch thick steel cable, holding the whole device aloft. The laden arms lifted around 10 to 20 meters and rotated left and right, partially demonstrating the process of rotating a lifted Starship or Super Heavy into position for stacking or launch mount installation. They were never lifted high enough to truly demonstrate that ability though, and they were lowered back to the ground soon after. A simulation released by the company shows the first official visualization of what the catch process might look like in real life. Based on the simulation of a super heavy catch, Musk shared on January 20th, all that oddly timed effort may end up producing a solution that's actually worse than what it's trying to replace. Based on the simulated telemetry shown in the visualization, Super Heavy's descent to the landing zone appears to be considerably gentler than the suicide burn SpaceX routinely uses on the Falcon ships. By decelerating as quickly as possible and making landing burns as short as possible, Falcon saves a considerable amount of propellant during recovery, extra propellant that, if otherwise required, would effectively increase Falcon's dry mass and decrease its payload to orbit. In the Super Heavy catch Musk shared, the booster appears to be landing just on an incredibly small patch of steel on the tower's Mechazilla arms, instead of a concrete pad on the ground. Aside from a tiny bit of lateral motion, the arms appear motionless during the catch, making it more of a landing than what the original idea communicated to the public. 
Furthermore, Super Heavy is shown decelerating rather slowly throughout the simulation and appears to hover for almost 10 seconds near the end. That slow, cautious descent and even slower touchdown may be necessary because of how incredibly accurate Super Heavy has to be to land on a pair of hard points with mere inches of lateral margin for error, and maybe a few square feet of usable surface area. The challenge is a bit like what it would be like if SpaceX, for some reason, made Falcon boosters land on two elevated ledges, about the width of car tires. Aside from demanding accurate rotational control, even the slightest lateral deviation would cause the booster to topple off the pillars and, in the case of the Super Heavy, fall about 100 feet onto concrete, where it would obviously explode. What that slow descent and final hover mean is that the Super Heavy landing shown would likely cost significantly more than Delta V propellant than a Falcon-style suicide burn. Propellant has mass, so Super Heavy would likely need to burn at least 5 to 10 tons more to carefully land on arms that aren't actively matching the booster's position and velocity. Ironically, SpaceX could probably quite easily add rudimentary, fixed legs, removing most of the bad aspects of Falcon's legs to Super Heavy, with a mass budget of 10 tons. But even if SpaceX were to make those legs as simple, dumb, and reliable as physically possible, and they wound up weighing 20 tons total, the inherent physics of rocketry means that adding 20 tons to Super Heavy's likely 200 ton dry mass would only reduce the rocket's payload to orbit by about 3 to 5 tons, or 1 to 3 percent. Further, regarding Musk's argument that landing on the arms will enhance the speed of reuse, it is difficult to see how landing Super Heavy or Starship in the same corridor, but on the ground instead of on the arms would change anything. If Super Heavy is accurate enough to land on a few square meters of steel, it must inherently be accurate enough to land within the few larger breadth of those arms. The only process landing on the arms would clearly remove is reattaching the arms to a landed booster or ship, which it's impossible to imagine saving more than a handful of minutes or maybe an hour of work. SpaceX's Falcon Booster turnaround record is currently 27 days and the reusable Falcon 9 was able to perform back-to-back -back launches that took place within 15 hours of each other, so it's even harder to imagine why SpaceX would be worrying about cutting minutes or a few hours off of the turnaround and reuse of a rocket that has never even performed a full static fire test, let alone attempted an orbital class launch, re-entry, or landing. Put simply, while Starbase's launch tower arms will undoubtedly be useful for quick lifting and stacking, super heavy and starships, it's looking more and more likely that using those arms as even a landing platform will, at best, be an inferior alternative to basic Falcon-style landings. Even if everything works perfectly, the arms actually cooperate with boosters to catch them, and Super Heavy can avoid hovering and use a more efficient suicide burn. The apparent best-case outcome of all that effort is marginally faster reuse and perhaps a 5% increase in the payload to orbit. Only time will tell if such a radical change proves to be worth such marginal benefits. If adjustments were to be made to this system, however, it would greatly affect the timeline for Moon and Mars exploration originally planned by Musk. What do you think about the current functional capacity of the Mechazilla? What more can be done to affect an improvement? Let us know your thoughts and opinions in the comments.